What's going on everybody? This is Medicosis Perfectionist where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue my physiology playlist. In the previous videos, we have talked about the autonomic nervous system, nerve physiology, and today it's time to talk about muscles. You have three types of muscles in your body, skeletal muscles, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscles. Voluntary, involuntary, involuntary. Multinucleated, uninucleated, uninucleated. Supplied by somatic nervous system, autonomic nervous system, autonomic nervous system. Which one has gap, junction, or nexus? Cardiac muscles. That's why they contract together as one syncytia. Let's start by some questions. Question number one. How many muscles are there in the human body? We're asking about skeletal muscles. What's the strongest muscle in your body? What's the longest muscle? The biggest muscle? And what's the skeletal muscle that's essential for survival? Let me digress for a second. This is my physiology playlist from video 0 to 25. It was an introduction and cell transport, osmosis, fixed principle, donut equilibrium, etc. 26 to 40, this was the autonomic nervous system. 41 to 50, that was the nerve physiology. And now we are video 51, muscle. Please watch these videos in order. Otherwise, there is no hope for you. In fifth grade, you learned that you have cells, that's the building unit of your body, and many cells will make tissue. Many tissues together will make an organ. Many organs together will make a system, and the system will perform the body function. How many kinds of tissues do we have for? Epithelium, connective, muscle, and nerve. We're talking about muscle here. Let's say that I have cancer here. It's going to be called carcinoma. How about here? Sarcoma. How about here? Myosarcoma. This one doesn't have a particular name. How many skeletal muscles do you have? About 620. Some textbooks will say 600, others will say 640, others will say 700. No one cares because it's very hard to find two cadavers with the same number of skeletal muscles. There is individual variation when it comes to muscles. I might have 620 skeletal muscles, you might have 630. Both are fine. You don't believe me? Consider the palmaris longus, for example. If you remember your anatomy, palmaris longus is not present in every body. Some people have it, some people don't. That's why it's an approximation. What's the strongest muscle? The masseter. The uterus is also strong. What's the longest muscle? Sartorius, which means tailor. What's the biggest muscle? Your gluteus maximus. What is the skeletal muscle that's essential for survival? I know, medicosis, the heart. Shut up, the heart is cardiac muscle. I said skeletal muscle. So the answer is the diaphragm. So you're saying that the heart is not important? Shut up, I said essential. I didn't say sufficient. Moreover, I also said skilled. Pay attention, doofus. What percentage of the total body weight is muscles? About 40%. That's an average. Some people have more, some people have less. If you have a shredded physique like me, 40% is nothing for you. Types of muscles. We have striated muscles and smooth muscles or non-striated muscles. And then the striated are skeletal or cardiac. Why do we call them skeletal? Because they are adherent to your bones. Oh, they are attached to your skeleton. That's why they are called skeletal. Cardiac muscle because it's the heart and smooth muscles because look at this. They are silky smooth, no striations. Voluntary, involuntary, involuntary. If something is voluntary, it is supplied by the somatic nervous system. If something is involuntary, it's supplied by the autonomic nervous system. Here is a difficult question. Let's say that we cut all the nerve fibers that are attached to the heart. Will the heart continue to function? The answer is yes, because it has automaticity. It has the SA node and the AV node. If I cut all of the nerves that are attached to your gut, your gastrointestinal tract, will they continue to function? The answer is yes, because they have an enteric nervous system, the myenteric and the submucosal. Preach. Each skeletal muscle cell has many nuclei. We call it multinucleated. The heart, just one. Mono or uninucleated. Smooth muscle, just one. Functions of skeletal muscles. Breathing, the diaphragm, don't forget this. Posture. As Dr. Jordan Peterson said, well, stand up straight with your shoulders back. What people did not understand that he was talking about skeletal muscle physiology. You bunch of abhorrent neo-Marxists. Locomotion, do the locomotion for me which means movement, heat production. They assist in venous return, yeah, because they squeeze the veins in your lower extremities, pushing the blood upwards. This will increase the preload. If you increase the input, you'll increase the output. No, duh. Also, don't forget, muscles are important for proprioception. Does anyone remember the dorsal column of the spinal cord? Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but now we have medicosis hierarchy of muscles. 
Here is the muscle. Each muscle is made of what? Muscle fibers or myofibers because myo means muscles. Each muscle fiber is made of myofibrils. Each myofibril is made of myofilaments and the myofilaments are either thin, actin or thick, myosin. Why did we call it actin? Anything that ends in in is usually a protein. Act because it's the protein of action. Because when you contract the muscle, the actin is gonna move towards the midline. Action, baby. All right, how about myosin? In means protein, myo means muscle. It's the protein of the muscle. Because when you look under the microscope, the thick fibers will appear more prominent than the thin fibers. That's why the myosin is the myo, it's the actual muscle. Okay, medicosis, so we have a muscle, muscle fiber, myofibril, and myofilament. Which one of these doofuses is the actual muscle cell or myocyte? And the answer is the muscle fiber is the muscle cell. So the muscle fiber is the same as muscle cell is the same as myocyte. Myo, muscle, site, cell, like erythrocyte, granulocyte, megakaryocyte, thyrocyte. Each muscle fiber is enveloped by sarcolemma, which is a beautiful sheath that contains glycoproteins. Let's zoom in. Each muscle fiber is made of many parallel myofibrils. These myofibrils are embedded in the cytoplasm of the muscle fiber among a complex tubular system. We'll talk about these tubules later. Let's zoom out. Muscle fibers bundle together by connective tissue and they are arranged in parallel fascicles between the tendinous ends of the muscle. You know, like each muscle has an origin and insertion. Yep, those are the two tendons. Each muscle is made of muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber is made of myofibrils. Let's talk about these doofuses. They are thread-like structures. Let's zoom out. They make up the muscle fiber. Let's zoom in. They are made of two types of myofilaments. Thin, actin, thick, myosin. These myofibrils are divided by Z lines into sarcomeres. Let's imagine that this is a myofibril. Nice. Here is a Z line. Here is a Z line. Here is a Z line. Between a Z line and another Z line, it's called a sarcomere. Sarcomere, 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 etc. What does sarco mean? Flesh, muscle. What does mere mean? A piece. A piece of the muscle. Beautiful. Some pearls for the pros. What is the structural unit of the muscle? The muscle fiber. What is the functional unit of the muscle? The sarcomere between two successive Z lines. So here's the entire story, freaking morning glory. Here is your muscle, okay? Each muscle is made of what? Made of fascicles. What the flip is that? A bundle of muscle fibers, okay? Each bundle of muscle fibers is made of individual muscle fibers. As you know, each muscle fiber is a muscle cell or a myocyte. And that's why the cell has nucleus. Who could have imagined? And by the way, skeletal muscles are multinucleated. This is one cell with many nuclei. The muscle fiber is enveloped by a sarcolemma, which contains glycoprotein. Oh, by the way, the sarcolemma is not the same as the cell membrane of the muscle. These are two separate layers. Okay. Each muscle fiber is made of myofibrils. And each myofibrils is made of many sarcomeres. Who made the sarcomeres? The Z lines. Between two Z lines, you have a sarcomere, a sarcomere, a sarcomere, a sarcomere. Why did they call them Z lines? I'll tell you very soon. Each sarcomere has thick filaments, known as myosin, and thin filaments known as actin. So we have muscle, muscle fibers, myofibrils, myofilaments. If you remember my biology videos, we have talked about the cytoskeleton of the cell. Even your cell has a skeleton. There are three types of cytoskeleton. Microfilaments, microtubules, intermediate filaments. Microfilaments are the actin. Microtubules are the tubulin, intermediate filaments are different depending on the tissue. In muscle tissues, they are called desmin. Let's talk about the lovely sarcomere. What's the sarcomere? It's a space in the myofibrils between two consecutive Z lines. Why did they call them Z? Because it comes from the German word Zwischenscheibe, which literally means an intermediate disc. What a beautiful word. Did your professor tell you that? Anyways, from here to here is a beautiful sarcomere. And this sarcomere is made of thick filaments known as myosin and thin filaments known as actin. Actin is thin and shiny. Myosin is thick and not so shiny. 
Scientists have noticed that actin is isotropic when exposed to the plane polarized light, but myosin is anisotropic. What the flip is isotropic? Well, iso means what? The same. Tropic or tropy means orientation, direction, something like that. A substance is said to be isotropic if it exhibits the same property regardless of its direction. Put it in any direction, the result is the same. But anisotropic is different. When you change the direction, you will change the properties. If you are isotropic, you will have one refractive index. But if you are anisotropic, you will have more than one refractive index. And that's why we will refer to actin as I and we will refer to myosin as A because isotropic and anisotropic. And that's why the area that contains actin is called what? The I band, isotropic. But the area that contains myosin is known as the A band, anisotropic. But here is a very common mistake among students. They will say that the I band contain actin, which is true. They will say that A band contains myosin only, which is not true because the A band, as you see, contains myosin and actin. The A band is dark, the I band is light, and then A, I, A, I, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. Have you noticed there is a beautiful area within the A band that has myosin only with no actin? This area right here. We will call this the H zone. H from the German hela, which means brighter. So here's your lovely A band, which is dark, which is in the center of the sarcomere, which contains myosin and actin. And here's your I band, which is light around the Z line, and it has actin only. How about this area that is bright within the A band? It's called the H zone. How about a beautiful line in the midline? It's called M, midline. It actually came from a German word, mittel, which means middle. Now, how the flip does the muscle contract? The myosin will not move. The actin will move. We will bring those two actins closer to the midline. Pull them inwards. Who's gonna pull them? Cross bridges from the myosin. So think of myosin as a person with arms. And this person will extend his arms and grab the other person and pull that person inwards. These pink pieces are known as cross bridges. They extend from the myosin, they pull the actin towards the midline. And now the sarcomere will get shorter when your muscle shortens. We call this a contraction, isotonic contraction for the sophisticated. So here is your muscle before contraction and here is your muscle when it contracted. When I contract, I bring the actins inwards. So what's gonna happen to the H zone? The H zone is gonna shrink. But what's gonna happen to the A band? Since the myosin does not move, the A band is not going to change in length. How about the I band since the actin is being pulled inwards? So the area that contains actin only is going to shorten as well. The myosin structure, two heavy chains, four light chains. These two heavy chains coil around each other, forming a double helix. Do you remember the DNA? Very similar. These two heavy chains are going to make a tail, a body of the myosin, two arms of the myosin, these orange sticks right here and these two arms have two hinges you see those hinges the green dots here is one hinge between the body of the myosin and the arm of the myosin here is the other hinge between the arm and the head how about the four light chains they make the two heads and these heads have three binding site we gotta bind actin yep in order to contract and to bring the actin inwards we need energy ATP binding site and we need to break down that ATP into ADP so you need an ATPase activity. Here is the lovely myosin. Tail, body and then we have two arms and then we have two heads. Here is a hinge between the body and the arm. Here is another hinge between the arm and the head. The heavy chains make everything. They make the tail, they are in the body, they are in the arm, they are also part of the head. However, the light chains make the heads only. Together, we call them cross bridges. Tell me about the lovely actin. Two chains only. They coil around each other, forming a helix. Actin has an active site. What's that? It's a site in the actin that's gonna bind the myosin cross bridges. Each thin filament has actin molecules and tropomyosin molecules. We'll talk about that in the next video. If you remember your nervous system, there was an upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. The lower motor neuron extends from the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle. What does it secrete? Acetylcholine. That's why we call it cholinergic fiber. Acetylcholine is going to bind to the nicotinic sub-M receptor. Nicotinic because it's stimulated by nicotine 
M because that's a muscle. Here is the lovely cholinergic fiber secreting acetylcholine acting on the N sub M receptor at the neuromuscular junction so that your muscle contracts. Pause and review. Now let's review a disease known as myotonic dystrophy or myotonia dystrophy from Picmonic. Let's go. Myotonic dystrophy is depicted as the muscle tonic man with disc trophy. It's an autosomal dominant disease. Here are the dominoes. There is a trinucleotide repeat made of CTG, can trophy gold, CTG. Symptoms include facial muscle weakness, frontal balding, a sustained grip, conduction defects, cataracts. Here is the cataract Cadillac. Selective atrophy of type 1 muscle fibers, as well as testicular atrophy. If you like this video, you will love my CNS pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionetics.com. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course on the same website. And for the next 13 students only, you can get a 30% discount towards anything on my website. Just use discount code SAFE30. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses or to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.